this is another nearly hole in, in this rock and you can see multiple arms branching outward from it and what's unique about this specimen this species is it has a very distinct texture in the arms notice all the little tiny bumps that stick up on it there are thousands literally multiple thousands of different species of bryzoan and um, it's beyond the ability for most uh, amateurs to identify the species. Um, to do so you have to cut these in half and take what's called a cross section to look at the little patterns underneath a microscope. Here's another little interesting fragment. Look at the wonderful texture on these arms. This is an unusual grouping of bryozoans, and these are all very tiny. They're slightly smaller than a marble. And there's multiple little spherical bryozoans, side by side by side, just packed on this rock. My finger for scale again. Here's a Riker mount. I've taken the glass off to avoid the glare. And this is commonly the uh, broken bits and pieces, the twig-like shapes of the bryozoans. Uh, the ones I have here have some unusual features. Um, this is just a nice texture. These all had a ridge-like structure which uh, ringed around each uh, twig-like shape. This other one, however, has them coming into little points. Again, I'm getting pretty close up here. These are pretty small. Here's my finger for comparison. One of the favorite species of a bryzone is this one here. It's called Constellaria. And the little tiny bumps look like stars constellation named after all the uh, groupings of stars we see in the sky and on this one I have little tiny arrows the tip of the arrows I don't know if my magnification will show this but there are baby snails on this there's a grouping of bryozoans that has has other smaller bryozoans growing on the limbs see how close I can get here see if you can see that pattern That lace-like network is another species of bryozoan growing on it. I wanted to show you how some contrasts, uh, how this one has very rounded edges as it ends. Very rounded. Over the ones here, they have uh, open bowl like openings in all its uh, appendages. Uh, the twig like shape comes to an end with a uh, bowl like depression. Again, my, uh, my videos, they are not technical. These are purely simple uh, visual introductions. You can find all kinds of technical material on the internet, but the uh, YouTube videos are just very simple. Here's another bryozoan which has uh, all types of borings in it. So some little animals are coming along boring right into its shell, most likely a snail. Snails are known to do borings in uh, usually brachiopods. This one just looks like it's got uh, chicken pox, so to speak. All those borings. Check out the difference. Uh, so obviously, I'm going to guess this was laying upright on the seafloor because on the back side, it's totally smooth. The snails weren't getting to that. Did a close-up of the zooid openings. It's a remarkable pattern that this species makes.
Here's a black and white poster of the Bryce Zoans, and let's start off with the uh, anatomy here. This shows a diagram of the tentacles, the mouth, the anus, pylorus, caseum, retractor muscles. Retractor muscles pull the uh, tentacles back into the pore, back into the hole where it's safe if a uh, predator is trying to eat the outer, the outer edges. Body of a living bryozoan showing some of its organs. The zoesia, the holes made on the outer external appearance that you see by looking at it. Uh, a cross section if you cut through the bryozoan to reveal what the inner chambers look like. Um, this is how they this is how they identify which species. This is why it's above the ability of most uh, laymen, uh, amateurs, to figure that out. It's uh, not an easy task when there are thousands upon thousands of them. Okay, another illustration of the uh, anatomy. Zoesium autopore or autozoesium. A little technical here, but you, again, if you want to learn about this more in depth, just look uh, Google search on uh, bryozoan anatomy. These are some whole bryozoans. They are fossilized or division bryozoans. They are about 440 million years old, the average age of most of the fossils in the Cincinnati tri state area. And Cincinnati is world famous for its fossils. These bryozoans are, bryozoans are the most common of all Cincinnati fossils. Entire reefs of uh, bryozoans existed during the Ordovician. We find their parts literally by the millions. Usually they look like this, broken bits and pieces. Broken bits and pieces uh, of these twig-like fragments in the rock. However, if you carefully go out and collect the pieces, they, uh, I reassembled these. I used crazy glue the gel type and I assemble these back together. This one took uh, a little more than three hours however it took three trips I had to keep going back to the same location I found it and I really had to uh, dig a little bit deeper into the uh, clay like sediment it was coming out of and uh, find every single piece. I got more than 90 missing maybe one or two pieces and that I left blank this one over here, however, it's nearly whole, and I substituted two of the missing pieces with the uh, Sculpey clay. And uh, these other pieces definitely go to it. I may not have the correct orientation, but it gives you an idea. And these beautiful bryozoans, most people think of bryozoans as something boring, because, again, when they're broken in bits like this, nobody gets too excited about it. But as this, you really see the beauty of what these things look like under the water. And I want to show you something neat. This is right here where my little finger's pointing, right there. That is the base of this bryozoan. And that simple little fact is uh, really neat because it shows that these things grew here in Cincinnati, in the tri-state area. We find these, there are literally millions of layers of bryozoans. Okay, so in the Paleozoic uh, fossils, the Paleozoic seas, there are literally millions of layers of these broken reefs covered up, buried and stacked one on top of another, on top of another, on top of another, on top of another. All the way from the uh, Ordovician, all the way up until the uh, Permian, when many of the, uh, the inland tropical seas that were covering the United States and other continents of the world, the sea level uh, fell, uh, went back down to normal. There's another bryozoan, and it, this one reminds me of moose antlers. And it would have sat on the seafloor something like this. We're missing a few pieces. And here's another one.